Hi everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Films You Should Be Watching. Uh, I'm glad you joined me again. Uh, I'm still a little iffy on this segment, so hopefully some of you are getting something out of this. I realize it's not as entertaining as WTF Cinema, or Aristarchus says, uh, it's more in the educational vein. And as stated in the original episode, its primary purpose is to show that I love movies. I really do. And to try and help you see movies that you might otherwise never have heard of. With that in mind, I would like to discuss with you again two movies. Uh, a domestic film and a foreign film. Because if I'm going to recommend a foreign film, I might as well recommend a domestic one for those of you who don't go to the movies to read. The domestic film I'd like to share with you is a film called Six String Samurai. This film is fantastic. Now, I'm not a huge kung fu film guy. In fact, I don't own any. I've never seen Enter the Dragon, I've never seen Bruce Lee, I've never seen any of these. Um, kung fu fighting films, not really my forte. And that's fine, you know, everybody's got their own thing, but Six String Samurai is, is a beautiful thing. Uh, it takes place in a post-apocalyptic future, which is always a soft spot for me, where the United States actually fell to a Russian invasion in our history, and the only part of civilization that was left at all was Las Vegas, where Elvis was crowned king. The movie takes place as Elvis has died of old age, and Vegas needs a new king. So musicians from all around the country are heading towards Las Vegas, which is what it's called now, Las Vegas, isn't that clever, to try and be crowned the King. Uh, it's kind of, it's a weird story. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's just off the wall bizarre, but it starts to fall into place when you learn that the entire movie is a metaphor. Uh, the characters are meant to represent different styles of music. Uh, the vacuum of the Elvis Presley style rock star and the various types of music that tried to fill that void when the King of Rock and Roll died. Our main character is named Buddy. He is very clearly supposed to be Buddy Holly. Uh, he meets a young kid. He goes on this adventure through a post-apocalyptic wasteland. He is played by an actor named Jeffrey Falcon, uh, who is amazing at the sword fighting that he has to do, the kung fu choreography. Like I said, not typically my genre, but I can still appreciate it being really well done. The fight scenes are well choreographed, the music will stick in your head for ages. The entire soundtrack is provided by a group named the Red Elvises. And after watching the movie, I had to go out and, well, I had to go on iTunes and buy a Red Elvises album. In fact, I got the one that's almost entirely comprised of the music from this movie. It's Surfing in Siberia is the name of the album. And I love dancing my ass off to that album. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, not much of a dancer, man. But uh, that album just gets you moving, man. It's great. Uh, if you can handle something off the wall, if you can handle something a little weird, or if you're a fan of post-apocalyptic or kung fu movies, and I keep saying kung fu, this is definitely more sword fighting than kung fu, but there is kung fu-ish elements to it. If any of these things appeal to you, go and seek out Six String Samurai. It won't disappoint. On to another foreign film, we're going to go into the French realm, uh, and no, I'm not going to talk about Amelie. Amelie's a fine film, but almost everybody's seen it. Amelie is the French version of Run, Roll, the Run. In fact, those are the two foreign films that most people have seen, and if you haven't, you should. There's a reason they're popular. They're quite good. Now, the film I want to talk to you about is He Loves Me, He Loves Me Not. It stars the same actress from Amelie, uh, Audrey Tateau who is pretty much this generation's Audrey Hepburn. It's pretty fantastic. And it's hard to talk about this film because one of the greatest selling points in it is the twist. And I don't want to spoil that because it's what makes the film unique. So what I will say is that this film plays pretty heavily on a literary device that I have always loved. And that's the idea that the same story, told from a different viewpoint, is a completely different story. If me and my best friend, we go on an adventure together, 
when we come home and we start telling people about the adventure, they're going to hear two different versions. They're going to hear my version, which is going to be awesome, and they're going to hear my best friend's version, which is probably going to be him whining about everything that happened. The, the story is affected by the person telling. And this shows that better than anything I've ever seen. Uh, about halfway through the movie, we rewind the movie and we see it from another person's point of view. Now, when you're watching it for the first time, the first half of the movie is going to seem pretty stereotypical. You're going to sit there like I did and go, well, I can see where this is going to go. This is going to happen and this is going to happen. Yeah, this is really exciting. But then that twist comes. And you won't see it coming. And it's marvelous. I would love to go into more detail, but I really can't without ruining it for you, and I don't want to ruin it. I want you to go see it. He Loves Me, He Loves Me Not, starring Audrey Tetto, and Six String Samurai, starring Jeffrey Falcon. Go see them, and I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you for your time.